For years, the staple American vehicle has always been the full-size pickup truck. Now, this segment has typically been dominated by an American entry from Ford, Ram trucks and General Motors. Now, since 2004, Nissan has been trying to steal a chunk of that sales pie with the original Titan. Now, 12 long years later, we finally have an all new version. And this week, the company has sent me over the latest 2017 Titan Platinum Reserve. Was it worth the long 12 year wait? That's what we're here to find out. If you're looking at this Nissan Titan and saying it looks familiar, that's because I actually showed you uh, a 2016 Titan XD last year in this very identical shade of deep sea blue pearl. It's a very nice color for the truck. Now, uh, the Titan XD is actually a different truck. It's kind of a tweener truck. It's sized in between a three quarter ton truck and a half ton truck like an F-150 and an F-250. Now, the regular Titan actually took a one year hiatus. The original model spanned from 2004 to 2015. That's a long time for any vehicle to be on the market with very minimal changes. Now this 2017 regular Titan competes head on with vehicles like the F-150, uh, the Toyota Tundra, the Ram 1500 and the Chevrolet Silverado. Now compared to the XD, this truck is considerably smaller. It's actually about a foot shorter in overall length and wheelbase. Width stays the same at around 80.7 inches wide, uh, but it's about an inch and a half lower in the height to give this truck a more manageable size. It's also a pretty substantial 2000 pounds lighter than the actual XD version. So this truck, even though it looks as big, and that's because its, it's width is gigantic, uh, it is a lot shorter, which makes it easier to drive in a day-to-day -day basis. Now you can see the design of this new Titan uh, takes basically all the design cues that we saw on the all-new Titan XD. You have the corporate Nissan face. Uh, my tester, being a Platinum Reserve, has standard LED low beam headlights with LED daytime running lights. Uh, the high beams, are, unfortunately, are just a halogen bulb, uh, but it's nice to see that Nissan includes LED headlights. The front has a very American truck look. It's kind of a look at me or me too styling uh, for me when I look at the car, with the, look at the truck. Uh, it has a very, a lot of styling cues from an F-150 with this gigantic grill, the squared off headlights, this imposing hood. It's a very uh, attractive, hand, handsome truck. Um, but in terms of, you know, standing out from the crowd, it kind of just blends in for me for the design. Now, uh, you can actually build uh, the Titan in pretty simplified trim levels. Only five is what Nissan offers. Compare that to the 10 or 12 that a lot of its American offerings uh, give you. And it's a lot easier to actually price out a Titan starting at the base S, SV, uh, Pro 4X, which is an off-road oriented model, um, SL, and then my tester sits at the top as the Platinum Reserve. You can also um, take the Titan in three different cab configurations. Mine is the more popular crew cab. It only comes with a short bed. It's about a five foot seven inch bed. Uh, Nissan currently doesn't offer a longer bed like some of its competitors. Now, uh, Nissan also introduced an extended cab, which has a bed that's about a foot longer. It's like six and a half feet. And if you guys need it over an eight foot bed, you have to go for the regular cab. Now the extended cab and the regular cab are limited to the S and SV trim. So if you guys want this fully loaded model, you have to actually go for the crew cab with the shorter bed. Now under the hood of the gas Titan is only one engine, a 5.6 liter uh, V with about 390 horsepower. There is a V6 that's coming. You cannot get the diesel in the XD and this uh, smaller regular Titan. Uh, and really the only diesel offering is either Ram and then Ford is coming out with the F-150 if you guys want a half ton with a diesel engine. Now, uh, around the sides, uh, my tester has these unique dark chrome finished uh, 20 inch wheels. They certainly are very flashy. There's a lot of chrome on this truck. Now chrome for me isn't my taste, but if you guys like the chrome, you're really gonna like the, you know, the aesthetics that you get with the Platinum Reserve. Now back, um, the taillights look identical again to the XD, and it has a very Me Too styling again here. I, I have a trouble differentiating it from a lot of its American entries. There's not very many cues in here other than the badging and the corporate grill that you know tell me this is a Nissan truck, but regardless, it's a very handsome truck. 
Uh, the bed, as you can see, uh, is pretty usable in size. There's this nice tailgate step that my tester has that helps you get into the bed, along with LED lighting that's standard on every trim level. But enough about the exterior. Let's take a look at the inside of the new Titan and see how, uh, or at least all the changes that Nissan has made this year. First approaching your Titan XD, you can see it's a pretty imposing truck. Uh, my tester being the Platinum Reserve does come standard with the company's smart key access system with push button start and remote start. It has the very familiar key fob that I have definitely voiced my concern about with Nissan updating. It does fit nicely in your pocket and it, and honestly, it works on the truck. Uh, I really only complain about mostly on Infinity products since it's the same key. But regardless, to start the truck up with the remote start, just push this lock button once, push and hold this button here until it starts. And you can hear it starts right up. If you wanna actually shut the engine off, just push this button one more time and it shuts off the truck for you. Now, uh, first walking up to the truck, you can see here there's a button on the door handle uh, that locks and unlocks the truck. So to lock it, just push this button here to lock it. That locks it for you. To unlock it, there's no sensor on the back of the handle. You have to actually touch the button again, and that will unlock the door for you. Now, looking at the interior of the regular size Titan, you can see it's identical to the XD that I showed you guys just uh, last year. Uh, Mine being the Platinum Reserve does have some updated trim. It's got these unique seats with the higher quality leather. They are heated and cooled as well. You have to go for this trim to get the heated and cooled function. And the leather is nice and supple. It's soft. Uh, it has kind of that, you know, country look that, you know, these top of the line truck buy or truck trims typically go with. There's some uh, nice splashes of wood grain, which I'm not entirely sure if it's real, but I like the brown leather contrasting the black. The steering wheel is also all wood. Now, as you can see, my tester has these nice side steps to get in or running boards. It also has a nice grab handle here to help you get in because I'm short and when you finally get into the truck uh, It's a nice high step in height and of course you get that typical high seating position that you associate when you buy a vehicle in this class now shutting the door it sounds actually nice and solid, so that's a nice uh, level of quality that it shows you right off the bat. Now again, push button start is included on my tester, so all you have to do is put your foot on the brake, push this button here to fire up the engine. And this is an engine that I actually haven't driven in a while in the Nissan Staple. It's the 5.6 liter VK, VK56DE V8 engine. It's a lovely engine. I love the nice, deep, baritone V8 noises it produces. Uh, I believe it has direct injection this year, which is why it also makes uh, a lot more power versus the previous generation of this motor. Now, looking at the rest of this cabin, at a glance, it's actually quite nice looking. The materials are pretty high quality in this top of the line version. You can see the dash is all stitched with the contrasting stitching. It is soft touch on this upper portion. It's also nice and soft on this portion right here of the actual dash. There's more of that wood grain with some platinum reserve badges splashed out. Uh, you have some dark chrome accenting the vents, some piano black plastic trim. It's a nice looking cabin design. Now looking at the door panels here, unfortunately, this is hard touch plastic, but it's also the same thing in that Chevy Silverado red line that I just reviewed as well. You get two person memory seats, which is nice. The windows are one touch automatic for the driver and front passenger. Kind of think they should just made it for the rear. This is a pretty expensive truck. It's nice and padded right here where your elbows are gonna rest, a little bit more storage. There's some more storage down here. It's all hard touch plastic, you know, down in the lower portion, which you're not really gonna touch. Now, the steering wheel, I'm not a fan of the design of the steering wheel. It's just um, dated looking to me. I don't like the wood that they also put throughout the wheel. The wheel itself is heated, so that's definitely nice. Uh, and it's also a power uh, tilt telescoping wheel, which is also a nice feature that they included on this trim. Looking at the center stack here, you can see this is my big issue uh, with the current Titan. It's got a head unit that is one of Nissan's older head units. It's basically the same unit you find like in a Sentra, in a Versa. It just looks too small in this gigantic dashboard. Uh, it's a seven inch display. Nissan really should have you know, updated this display with at least an eight, an eight inch display or like an 8.4. Uh, you definitely find better head units in a lot of its competitor truck, save for the Toyota Tundra, which is also pretty old, but a lot of the American entries just offer a better system overall. You know, there it has some nice buttons. It's all nicely laid out, but the buttons are a little bit on the small side. Uh, when you go to the nav screen here, it's very, very old. The map display looks like it comes from something in like 2004. Thankfully, when you guys go for the Platinum Reserve, you do have a 360 camera, uh, which is Nissan's like around view monitoring system. You can see it's got four cameras around the truck, so it's nice when you have something this big, so it helps you, you know, park this vehicle, helps you with backing up. It also has trajectory. It has front and rear parking sensors to help with that, so you really shouldn't be, you know, hitting things too much when you guys are driving this truck. Um, it is missing Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. That's something that Nissan has not implemented yet. I really just want the company to update this head unit. It's just, 
you know, too small in this truck and they are, I believe, working on an all new infotainment system. It's my same issue that I had with uh, some Infinity products as well with the two screens. It's just they could do better and it needs it needs to do, you know, to catch up to the rest of the competition. Um, my tester also has dual zone automatic climate control, which is nice. You have some more buttons here. Blind spot monitoring is new for 2017 as well. Uh, the XD didn't have it, which I kind of complained about a bit. You have your parking sensors there, heated steering wheel controls, your stability control off switch. It's got a real four wheel drive system because this is a real truck. It, you know, it's switch it between four high, four low. There is no automatic setting though. Uh, my tester also has this nice tra integrated trailer brake controller, which is good if you guys are planning to actually use this to tow. Your heated and cooled seat controls are down here. Again, that's pretty nice. Typical in a truck fashion, there's plenty of storage down here, so you can you know, hide away stuff. Big cup holders here, nice soft armrest right here with some more platinum reserve badges. There's a huge center console there so where you can literally like store like an iPad or maybe even a small laptop. More cup holders back here for the rear seat passengers. Unfortunately, Nissan doesn't offer the Titan with a sunroof. Uh, this is top of the line model, doesn't offer a sunroof. A lot of its competitors offer either a standard sunroof or Ford offers the big, you know, twin sunroof design if you guys want that, which is a pretty pricey option. The glove compartment is damped. It's actually a little bit on the small side for such a big interior, but nevertheless, um, the rest of the cabin for the Titan is nice. Uh, this has a standard, you know, seven speed automatic transmission with a typical shifter here. It does have a manual mode, a tow mode. It gets the job done. Uh, overall, the, in the inside, looks nice at a glance but the tech is really what's dated again it kind of offers a lot of me too features with the rest of the trucks um although you do get you know some typical nissan um design touches in here just wish they would update the tech and give us android auto and a carplay and a bigger screen the crew cab model also offers a gigantic back seat which is pretty much the norm in this class of vehicle um, so if you guys actually need to carry people you definitely need to go for this con configuration now the seat itself you can actually fold up and you can actually put this out here to give you kind of like a little load floor there's also it looks like a lockable storage compartment down here if you guys want to hide some stuff away so again that's pretty nice if you guys actually you know need to put some stuff in here and not have to carry around some people um, as opposed to you know like some stuff to fold the seat down you actually pull this lever it uh, drops the seat down now stepping in here you can see the running board is in a nice addition there's also a grab handle here to help you get in and then when you get to the rear seat it is huge like seriously uh, <laughs> shutting the door it sounds just as solid as the front um, um, Nissan also throws in some decent touches in the rear seat. You have, you know, two level map storage uh, here where you can actually put like maybe a cell phone in this storage here on this upper portion and then something bigger that goes deeper into the seat. Uh, the materials back here are hard touch plastic kind of what I expected, but it is soft touch right here. Uh, Nissan also included rear seat air vents. There's separate heated rear seats back here and then a household power outlet. No USB ports, but at least you get you know that if you guys need to charge something. There is a nice little armrest right here uh, that folds down with some dual cup holders. And then this little screen here slides forward and back from a control in the front seats. Now the bed of the Titan also is nicely damped. That's kind of what you expect nowadays in a lot of the modern trucks. Now, if you guys need a longer bed, you need to downgrade to the extended cab model or the, the regular cab because Nissan doesn't offer two sizes like they did in the previous generation. I imagine they're gonna change that, but at launch, you just get one size for the bed. It's a five foot seven inch bed, about the norm for the short beds that you get with the crew cab. It's a very usable bed. Uh, the rear wheels, um, the fender gaps don't actually take up that much space. There's also a, be a nice bed liner. There's some nice, you know, um, tie down hooks and you know, uh, adjustable uh, tie down and cleats uh, throughout the bed so you can you know use this pretty well. Nissan also offers a bed extender if you guys want it or a tonneau cover to cover up the bed. Now uh, getting back here there is a nice little step right here that my tester has as, as an accessory. You kind of have to put your foot into it. <laughs> there it goes and then it lowers down it helps you kind of get into the bed for a short people but you can see here there's LED lighting throughout the bed uh, at night so that helps you see your stuff if you're trying to pull some of your crap out here in the dark. massive hood of the new Titan, Nissan just offers one engine for now. This is the company's uh, 5.6 liter uh, gasoline direct injection, naturally aspirated V8. Uh, they've been using this motor for a long time. They did update this year, of course, with the direct injection. It makes a lot more power now, 390 horsepower and 394 pounds of torque. Uh, that is up from the 317 that you got in the previous generation, so it's a nice, healthy boost. It all goes through a one choice only seven speed automatic transmission, replaces the old five speed automatic uh, in the previous generation, and V6 
6 that's coming, but for now, all you get is the V8. Not, not complaining, it's a great motor. Uh, the truck itself weighs around 5,500 pounds. It also tows about 9,300 pounds, which is about 1,000 to 2,000 pounds less than its competition, so you need to keep that in mind. The bed also only holds about 1,600 pounds, which is right in line with the competition. Now, fuel economy is actually rated at 15 city, 21 highway. You lose one on the highway if you guys go for the Pro 4X because it loses some of the aerodynamic stuff. All right, it all runs on regular gas. Uh, let's get out on the road and see how it all works together. It's been a while since I drove the first generation Titan. I think it must have been maybe like three, four years ago. It was a rental truck. Uh, and I always was pretty impressed with the original Titan when it first came out back in 2004. However, you know, when you're on the market for 10 plus years without a redesign, all of its competitors just seriously leapfrog you. And uh, that was the case with the old Titan. It's American entries, even the Tundra has seriously out outclassed it and everything. Uh, and this new one definitely has some ground to make, uh, make up. Um, thankfully, you know, Nissan pushed this generation pretty far forward uh, in terms of the technology, in terms of the chassis refinements, and my initial impressions are quite positive. This is a pretty smooth riding truck. It feels big, you know, it has that nice presence that you get with all the American offerings. Uh, the ride quality is also nice and controlled, uh, and I also really like the sound, the feel, and the smoothness that you get with this V8 engine. Now with only one engine choice at launch, this 5.6 liter V8 is a wonderful engine. Uh, it makes all the right noises, it's nice and smooth, linear, pulls all the way to its 6200 RPM redline, and it's basically on par with the 6.2 you get in the GM trucks, um, the EcoBoost 3.5 and the F-150, and the 5.7 you get in the uh, Tundra and the Ram. It's just a really you know, great motor that's well suited to this truck. The seven-speed automatic transmission also is a smooth and refined partner. I like the fact that it has, you know, two more gears over the old one. It is actually down a gear compared to its, you know, a lot of its competitors. And Ford is now rolling out a 10-speed auto in the new F-150. So it's amazing how much transmission technology has really progressed forward. Trucks in general were, stu were stuck at like a five-speed auto for years and years and years. So it's good to see, you know, the manufacturers really elevate the technology. Now, driving the Titan, the regular one, is actually not bad. If you guys are used to driving, you know, other full-size trucks, this is going to feel pretty much right at home. Uh, it's a very wide truck so you're gonna have to get used to how wide it is. That's why it kind of feels like the XD uh, when I'm driving it. Uh, but what really sets it apart is the fact that this is a lot shorter. It's got a, a gasoline V8, so it doesn't feel too much like a bus or a commercial vehicle like the actual XD did. This feels more like a you know, civilian consumer truck uh, versus the you know, bigger version. <laughs> I really love the way that uh, 5.6 sounds. It's just a great motor. You also will find this engine uh, in some Infinity products as well. Now there isn't too much test data on the gas, you know, regular size Titan, but it feels like it gets to 60 in about seven seconds, which is pretty quick for something this big. Um, the F-150 with the EcoBoost 3.5 is quicker, and the Silverado and you know GMC uh, Sierra twins will smoke this with the 6.2. Those are like also like a 5.9 second truck. But you know, overall, you're not going to buy these trucks to go racing. What you're really going to appreciate is just all the smooth linear power, the responsive transmission, those lovely V8 noises. So again, and if you guys want a V8, the Titan should also be on your list as it does offer that traditional V8 as standard equipment. I mean, about until, until the V6 offering uh, is introduced uh, later, later this year. But, you know, driving it around, the visibility in here is also pretty good. Um, you have a nice commanding view of the road. The hood uh, doesn't really get in your line of sight, but you do have these very large side mirrors that also include blind spot monitoring with your cross traffic alert. And Nissan also throws in blind spot mirrors, which is definitely new to me. I've never actually had a car that had blind spot mirrors and blind Blind spot monitoring in the side view mirror so it's a nice addition the view out of the back is pretty much what you would expect with a truck uh, it is you know you're gonna have to get used to it if you're not used to driving big trucks you're not gonna really like this now in terms of the handling I'm on this back road here and the Titan definitely this is not its its element uh, it can handle it pretty well just the steering it's electric power steering it's very truck slow so you again you have to slow your speed down here when you're going through some tight corners but you know it's very controlled the ride is nice and smooth even though the truck is unloaded right now 
Uh, and it's also pretty quiet in here. Instead, all you hear really is just those lovely V8 noises. If you guys want to hear a V8, just put your foot down and it just makes all the right noises. The transmission also is pretty quick to downshift if you ask for more power as soon as my foot goes down. Uh, so again, this is a pretty pleasant truck to drive in everyday driving. What the Titan is lacking compared to its competitors is any form of driver assistance tech other than just the blind spot and rear cross traffic alert and the 360 camera. There's no automatic emergency braking, no adaptive cruise control, no active lane keep assist or you know, passive lane departure warning. Uh, Nissan doesn't offer it on the Titan. Uh, you have to buy like the Ford, uh, the GM twins um, to get those kind of features. So again, those features are still kind of trickling down into the full size truck market, but it would be nice to see Nissan, you know, innovate a little bit, you know, be a step ahead of its competitors. Everything else about the Titan just kind of feels like they've caught up, but there's very little in this truck that really would make me choose it over a lot of its competition. I have to admit, this is a pretty quick truck. I'm really happy with the uh, the powertrain, you know, combination that they give you as standard equipment in the new Titan. Now, let's talk a little bit about some numbers here. The fuel economy. I mentioned it was rated at 15 city, 21 highway. Now, the trip computer actually says I've been averaging around 18 miles per gallon in my week's worth of testing. That's pretty damn impressive, to be honest. Um, it has it has been a mixture of city and highway. Uh, when it's around mostly city, I averaged around 13. That's about what I expected. On the highway, I got it up to around 20 miles per gallon. So again. It's it's not bad, not terribly great either. The new F-150 has the highest EPA rating, or you need to go for the diesel offerings from Ram uh, or the upcoming F-150 if you guys want the most MPG. But in terms of a gas V8, it's about what I expected uh, in the norm. Now let's talk about the pricing of this new Titan. Uh, being a new truck, and of course it is more expensive than the old one, uh, it starts at around 29.5 for a base regular cab, two wheel drive uh, Titan. Uh, that's for the base S model, of course. Now, if you guys want four wheel drive, you have to spend another three grand to get four wheel drive. I imagine most of you will do that. Who in their right mind buys a truck uh, that is rear wheel drive without four wheel drive? Now, uh, regarding the different cab configurations, they're about $3,000 extra when you want to step up to the extended cab or the crew cab. So, which means if you want the cheapest crew cab S, it starts at around $38,000, uh, just under 40 grand, which again is almost $10,000 more than the base, you know, two wheel drive uh, regular cab uh, Titan S. Uh, that you guys are looking at as like a work truck. Now, my tester being the Platinum Reserve comes well equipped. It's loaded. There's really no options on this truck aside from a couple of small like convenience or cargo protection area uh, options that are relatively cheap. My truck starts at just under $56,000. Add like $1,200 for destination and you're looking at around $57,000. Now, that sounds like a lot of money for sure. Uh, it's basically as expensive as that new Silverado Redline Edition I just tested a couple weeks ago. Now, keep in mind, if you guys look at an F-150, that's even more expensive. If you guys go for a loaded F-150, they're over $60,000. Uh, so these trucks can definitely have some sticker shock. Thankfully, there's plenty of incentives on these big trucks where you can literally take between five to 10 grand off the sticker if you're actually looking to purchase one of these bad boys uh, from your local dealership. But with all that said, how does the Titan stack up against its competition? Again, there's a lot of things about the Titan that I like. Uh, it is relatively simple to build um, because it only has five trims and everything just comes standard. Uh, it's a nice looking truck. It rides well. It's got a great powertrain. It, it uh, is quiet on the inside. The seats are comfortable. It's easy to drive if you guys are used to driving a big truck. And it basically tows and hauls what you need it to do. So it's gonna get the job done. Uh, to be honest though, the tech infotainment system, how it's so incredibly dated for me, kind of just, sours the whole experience for me. I want something with you know Android Auto and CarPlay, a larger screen, better navigation graphics, and just an easier interface. So for me, you know, if you really like Nissans and you're looking for just an easier, you know, slightly less expensive truck, the Titan certainly is worth a look. Um, but if you're looking for the most innovative truck, something with all the latest tech in it, um, something that has a design that's a little bit more unique. You may also want to check out a lot of its more American competition, which is typically what people do. Uh, Nissan actually sold about 4,000 Titans, just under 4,000 Titans in July of 2017. Now, that's actually a huge jump over the you know same time in 2016 in that same month. Now, but keep in mind, at the same time in July 2017, Ford sold almost 70,000 F-150s. So. You know, the Americans still dominate the segment, but it's nice to see that Nissan is trying with their all-new Titan, and it's definitely worth a look if you guys don't want the typical Ford, you know, Chevy, 
GMC or you know Dodge offerings that you see out on the road. Anyways, I hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on this 2017 Nissan Titan. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, make sure you follow me on Instagram at Redline underscore reviews. Like us on Facebook. And if you haven't done so, please subscribe to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll catch you all in the next video.